Hello racers and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to continue the setup guide series with a review of the Essential 112th in F1 RC Racers Guide. Now the style of these uh, setup guide series is that seems to work the best is to review each section or chapter and give a few impressions as to what the content is, um, how useful it is, and then across the setup guide series, we've been taking a deep dive into roll center adjustments to see how that changes over time. So with that said, let's dig in. Now, the Essential 112 uh, Racer's Guide was released in 2019 by David Stevens. Now I bought this book myself because I was looking for I had been doing a lot of racing in 112th to 2-wheel drive buggy and a lot of touring, but I really hadn't raced um, pan cars. So I wanted to get some information about it, how to set them up, how to get going with them. Taking a, and when I saw a review of this online, you can see that just the table of contents, pages and pages of information. So I wanted to check that out. Introduction. Let's take a look at that. I got the little post-it notes in there to help me find stuff. So the players in this game, we have uh, the 112th section is authored. A lot of information has come from David Spichette. Uh, he's a, a European uh, 112th racer and a world champion. Uh, three times world champion. So he, the information he gives is uh, influential for sure. And the player for F1 is Jan Rathowski. Now this fellow here races in countless races around the world. X-ray driver and has been very successful racing in uh, F1 110 scale F1 cars. And we have the author... Uh, David Stevens. Uh, he is a writer. He's also the um, owner of the website rcformula1.com. So he was one of the early adopters in the Formula One uh, cars that came out. And he got on, on board with that pretty quick. And we created a, like a review site and information site for it. Now we'll take a look at the cars here. So this book would work on any kind of pan car, 1 10th, 1 12th. You can see the 1 12th size. And over here they show a few examples of the, of the Formula 1. Now typically uh, a pan car, as it's called, you can see they have a fixed rear axle. Not independent suspension, that's part of the rules of the class. So they are a little bit different, but they do have independent front suspension. So they are a little bit different to set up, which is why I got this book. On the next section, chapter two, the driving process. Now this section here, when I, I was a little bit surprised to see that, to see that in a setup guide, but the, the more I read through this particular section, uh, the more the more useful this section is. Now this this section will save tenths off your lap times. Uh, excellent for new racers, old pros. Uh, really helps you get into that racer's mindset. You always hear racers say the the best time, you know, to get up on the driver's stand, practice, practice, practice. Well, this section will help you practice with a purpose. It teaches you about apexes, you know, whether to take corners early or late apex, geometric apex, it tells you when to brake, when to accelerate, um, driver etiquette, marshalling, uh, and especially with the low power, it, it kind of gives you a bit of a focus around the low power aspect of like the Formula One has, doesn't have a lot of power into it. And um, th this section is like asking a friend to, uh, you know, to, to help you do the driving. Uh, how to set up the corners, how to see the track as a series of, 
like a grouping of corners versus one corner at a time. So that section there, really beneficial to a new racer. Um, section three is the car setup reference. Now the car setup reference is presented alphabetically. So it goes from Ackerman to toe or, or whatever. Now it doesn't, since it's presented alphabetically, you don't know the difference or it doesn't really present, you know, what's more important than the other. Is Ackerman more important than Roll Center? Uh, it doesn't really tell you. The back of the book, though, does. And we'll, when we get there, we'll really take a deep dive into that area. Um, so let's take a look. I, I've been using Roll Center as the example of this section. As to how he presents things in the book. Now you can see in, in this particular adjustment... A little diagram how roll center um, is calculated. Talks about the center of gravity. Talks about um, what happens when you when you when you uh, make the change. It says by raising the height of the roll center, the blue line becomes shorter. So when you raise the roll center, the car won't roll as much, and traction is reduced. Lowering the height of the roll center, blue line becomes longer, therefore the traction will roll more and traction will be increased. Let's just think about that for a moment before we kind of dig into it a bit more. So what the traditional view of roll center is, and I just use my little corner here, is that as a car approaches a corner with a low roll center, the car will roll more on corner entry and while it is rolling, it doesn't have as much grip initially, but because it rolls, it'll have more mid-corner and exit grip. With a high roll center, because it, it, will, it will not roll as much, it'll transfer a lot more weight in the corner entry, but then mid-corner and exit, it'll have less grip. So that's the traditional view of roll center. And this book here seems to follow that. We'll just take a look at the chart here. It says lower front roll center, increase, decrease amount of roll, more on throttle steering, mid corner and corner exit. So that sounds pretty traditional. Increases front traction, mid corner and quarter exit. Makes sense. Car is slower to respond. Yeah, for sure. And it says better on smooth high grip tracks with fast corners. So that, that's typical for a low roll center. And let's just see what he writes about for a high roll center. It says less on throttle steering during mid corner and exit. Well, that made sense because the, the car has not rolled. Decreases front traction mid corner and corner exit. Car is quicker to respond. That makes sense because the it transfers weight almost immediately. Using high grip to an Conditions to avoid traction rolling. Use on tracks with quick direction changes. So that's pretty interesting. Um, and then it says, um, let's see here. Now here's part of the mystery and intrigue. I find David Stevens puts in a little mystery and intrigue into every book. It says rear roll center. So that was all about the front. And in the rear here it says, Look to page 78 on how to adjust the rear roll center. But oddly enough, this is page 78. So that's part of the mystery here is that how do you adjust the rear roll center? Well, it does say on page 69 or 79 how to do that adjustment. And they say to increase and decrease shims on the rear pod. So that's pretty interesting. Let's see if it refers us back. Oh yes, adding shims under the side link changes the rear roll center. Refer to page 78, which takes you back. And it's, so it's like a little one of those choose your adventure books at that point. Uh, talk to Dave Stevens about it. He said that he's going to do an adjustment to the book on the next, on the next release. So you can see a lot of detail in the settings section. So this is really helpful for racers and for what I bought it for, wasn't it? You know, how do I do those adjustments and what do I expect when I make those changes? Okay, 
So it goes from Ackerman to steering link able, T-bar, toe, track width, lots of information in there. Now, section four is tweak. Tweak is so important with a pan car that they actually made an entire section dedicated to that. It's not just a, a few bullets in there. So you get a few pages of just tweak and how to set it and how to uh, detect whether whether it, your car has it by its handling characteristics. Next section, case studies. Now case studies, this, this is a, for me I was kind of wondering, you know, how, what the case study is, but what a case study you could think of it is, as a friend who's been to a, like a big event and uh, that they can share with you the idea of, you know, how that event uh, went over the, the few days with the, the adjustments that they made, the traction levels, how they increased. Uh, so this is very interesting, actually, when I read through this. And it is quite a substantial part of the book. You can see that there's about 30 pages dedicated to different, um, different surface, whether it be carpet, whether it's outdoors, big events. You can see that here's a three different racers, how they finished and what what they did through the event. You know, different teams reporting on this. So this section is actually pretty good. Tells you the gearing, tells you the grip levels, how it changed. Indoors, outdoors on, you know, exam, example on asphalt. It's a great section of the book. Really, really gets uh, some information that is hard to learn unless you actually do it. Uh, the next section, body shells. Typically, pan cars have the like the GT3 style of body, but you can see, uh, just for information, a lot of rules uh, will dictate what type of body you use. Like a GT12 uses more of a touring car style body, LMP1, uh, different Formula One, of course, using Formula One cars. Next section we have is the glossary of terms. So that's just to give you better definitions. You hear people use these terms at the track. So you can refer when someone says something's off power, something's pushing, something's loose, you know, pushes an understeer condition where you turn the wheels and it just drives straight. Next section, and this section for this book is the money. Uh, the setup the setup section that we talked about, the setup reference gives you a list of all the different settings you can change. This section tells you when to use them. So you can see a quick reference. You can see that if you have too much steering, oversteer, uh, general oversteer, oversteer at corner entry, oversteer at mid corner, corner exit. So if you experience any of these type of things on the on track this book here will give you an, an itemized list in what adjust adjustments to make to remove that condition so this section here is worth the is worth the cost of the of the book and i've actually seen um uh, racers at big races be saved by this book they got there early uh, they seem to have enough traction as the traction built through the event the car started to traction roll and they just they just looked into the section, traction rolling, and we'll, and we we'll take a look at that section. Now I covered most of it because these are, are Dave Stevens secrets, they're not necessarily mine. But I just wanted to, just you to see what to do. So here we see traction rolling. You see the first thing to do is to adjust your front wing. Second thing to do is reduce your ride height. Third thing to do is reduce your to uh, soften your side springs and there's quite a list there so this section here tells you when to do that stuff and I think this is the first book that it gave you this step-by-step -step, step reference so what I found with this book is that if you're new to racing you start with the start by going through the front reading through it that way and if you're using it as a guide on the track side you start from the back and it tells you you know, the quick reference things 
Uh, if you notice that your car is in a specific condition, you know, you get the tips right there on how to fix that condition. So that is the, re the uh, review of the Essential 112th and F1 RC Racer's Guide. I'll put a link to this book so you can buy a copy yourself. I think it, you know, if you are racing in 112th pan car or F1, this book here is going to be really indispensable information for you. So thanks. This will tidy up the setup guide series. If you do know of another guide, put a comment below and, and I'll research that and we'll do a review on it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next series.